All right, today in science, we are starting our next unit and it's called landforms. So our teaching point says, I can identify and compare characteristics and locations of bodies of water. So we're gonna go ahead and watch a vocabulary. So you want to be a geophysicist, huh? Yeah! You're going to need to learn your landforms and your bodies of water. Well, I know I'm just an intern, but I'm ready to learn. Let's go. There are landforms that go from high to low. Around those is where bodies of water flow through valleys. Down mountains and over plains. Learn your landforms. Here, let me explain. There are landforms that go from high to low. Around those is where bodies of water flow through valleys. Down mountains and over plains. Learn your landforms. Here, let me explain. Listen here. If you're trying to get a lay of the land, there's a few terms you'll need to understand. Okay. And there's a whole lot. There's no time to chill. What's that land sticking up over there? That's a hill. I knew that. Right. And its top is round. It's not that tall. You might have some fun going down. Whoa. But not on a mountain. That's nope. land that's way taller than its surroundings. Hey, yo, <laughs> and its sides are steep. And when you climb to the top, you reach the peak. <laughs> and when they connect, it's a range. But what's that piece of land sticking up looking strange? Oh, you didn't know? That's a plateau. It's big and high, but its top is flat, though. And what's that below? Down there is a valley. That's the lowland. A death valley out in Cali? Yup, a deep valley is called a canyon, and they're formed when water erodes the land. Erosion, when water carries rock away. Little by little, and day after day. It could be an ocean or a river. No doubt, rivers start at the source, and they end at the mouth. Now how about those big chunks of ice that stay frozen? Those are glaciers, and they also cause erosion. Plus, when they melt, they can form a lake. Water that's surrounded by land, and some are great. Get it? Next, have you heard of an island? Yeah, that's land with water on all sides, man. Right. And the thing about those is they can be formed by volcanoes, openings in the earth, and they're usually raised. But watch out, that's where gas and hot lava escape. There are landforms that go from high to low. Around those is where bodies of water flow through valleys. Down mountains and over plains, learn your landforms. Here, let me explain. There are landforms that go from high to low. Around those is where bodies of water flow through valleys. Down mountains and over plains, learn your landforms. Here, let me explain. Uh, uh, back on land, we're on the plains, broad, flat areas. Great for growing grains. That's true, and when the plain is grassy, you can call that a prairie if you want to get classy. Okay, but what's that water with land on three sides? That's a bay, and let me say, they're great for boat rides. Right. While I'm here convincing you, the opposite of a bay would be a peninsula. What? That's land surrounded on three sides by water. Oh, I know an example, the state of Florida. Yup, but we still got a lot on the plate. What? That narrow body of water over there is a strait. Okay. It connects two bodies that are larger. Oh, do you mean like the Strait of Gibraltar? Yup, and here's something you will probably see the most. Any land that meets the ocean... Is the coast. Right, but there's still many more terms to learn. I'll tell you what I see, sir. It's my turn. There are landforms that go from high to low. Around those is where bodies of water flow through valleys. Down mountains and over plains. Learn your landforms. Here, let me explain. There are landforms that go from high to low. Around those is where bodies of water flow through valleys. Down mountains and over plains. Learn your landforms. Here, let me explain. All right. And then the next one is water on earth. And this is discovery education. I may have to log in. Let me see. Yep, just hold on just a second. Here we go. Water is everywhere. We find water in lakes, rivers, oceans, ice, and even underground. There's so much water on Earth that Earth looks like a blue marble from space. 
We don't know of any other planet that has water the way ours does. Hold up a globe and look at how much blue you see. More than two-thirds of the Earth is covered by bodies of water, mainly oceans. When you look closer and closer and closer, you see more and more places where water is found. As water moves from place to place, it changes shape. The sun heats water to make it rise into the sky where it travels. Water can also change phase from liquid water to ice or disappear into the air as water vapor. No matter what its properties are, the total amount of water on Earth does not change. We can recycle it, but we can't make new water. The number of people on Earth is growing, so we really need to know where all of the water is and how to take care of it. People need water to live. We use it to drink, prepare food, bathe, and to stay healthy. We also use water for cleaning, recreation, shipping, travel, and as a source of food. All fish, animals, and insects need water too. Water is needed for healthy plant growth. Oceans hold most of the world's water. They are large, deep storage areas filled with salt water. Water from land drains and flows into the oceans where it can be stored for thousands of years. Not only do oceans give us seafood and pretty beaches, but they help to control weather and climate. Oceans provide water for clouds, precipitation, and huge storms like hurricanes. Ocean waters store heat and keep temperatures for islands steady throughout the year. Deep water moves slowly in currents. Ocean currents help to transfer heat around the globe. Oceans have always been used for travel and they provide a good way to move heavy objects by ship. Even though oceans contain a lot of water, we can't drink it until the salt is removed, and that's not an easy thing to do. Did you know that most of the water on Earth is salt water? If all of the water on Earth were poured into 100 large buckets, 97 of the buckets would be salty ocean water. The oceans are huge, and there is a lot we don't know about them. We do know that they hold a large variety of plants, fish, and other creatures. A scientist who studies oceans is an oceanographer. All right, we will have to stop there for today. So the next section will be about lakes. So in class kick, your assignment is going to be 10 slash 26 landforms and bodies of water number one. Okay, so that's what you're going to be working on right now. Go ahead and do so, please. If you're unsure what it's called, you can go back to the independent task page and you can look in the science box and it tells you what to do. And this is also where the video is and you can rewatch it.